morning, church. My name is Candy Thorpe, and uh, I have a special guest with me today. This is Gloria Nardi Bell, and uh, I wanted to introduce Gloria to you and talk with her a little bit today and talk about some of the ways that she's serving and the ways that she's branched out during this uh, the COVID lockdown and the pandemic. So, uh, so Gloria, why don't you take 60 seconds and tell us three random facts about yourself that you would like us to know? Well, I think um, uh, my most important fact is that I'm in a mixed marriage, as I like to call it. I was raised uh, very Italian, off the boat, literally Catholic. And my husband was raised very Scottish Presbyterian. And we come from very different cultures. And being with Jim all these years uh, has basically broadened my horizons. There's a world outside of being Italian and Catholic. Um, and it's allowed me to appreciate differences in people and differences in, in different cultures. And I think that it has also made me a better Christian because it has opened my heart to understanding when somebody does something not my way. Uh, the other thing is that I love doing crafts, especially at Christmas. I helped out with some of the costumes for the Christmas pageant. I loved doing that. And um, I practiced law for a good part of um, my, my life, mostly family and child welfare. So those are the three things that, um, uh, that I think um, really sum up who I am. Well, it's, uh, it's awesome to have you as part of the church family. And uh, you know, what you say about the, the fact that as believers, we come together and we all bring a little bit of our past and we all bring a little bit of our experience and what ends up happening is the body of Christ becomes richer because of it. We often say at Calvary Burlington that God brings you for a purpose. And sometimes yeah. that purpose is for what God is going to do in you. And, but oftentimes that purpose is for what God is going to do through you. And so, you know, as you settled yourself at Calvary Burlington, you started to look for different ways to serve and and you've done some coffee ministry and you you're branching out and, and trying some kids ministry and then one day you decided that you wanted to get involved in student ministries now i would not dare ask you your age but i would say that that it is it would be unusual for someone of a, an esteemed stage of life to to just crack into student ministries um, and and decide that maybe this is where God would have them serve. So talk to us a little bit about how how that you came to that decision. Well, uh, I will tell you my age. I turned sixty six in August, Happy and I have no children. So uh, as far as I am concerned, I am the worst possible choice. Uh, for working with small children and um, and teenagers because I know nothing uh, about them. Well, I saw, I think it was on Facebook or it was an email blast or something like that where Pastor Aaron um, put out a call for uh, people to work in student ministry. And I responded, uh, but I did say that I am A, the most unqualified person to do this, and B, I understand that, um, you know, this will likely be temporary until they find somebody better than me to do the job. And uh, I've been there for almost a year now. So you're there, you're serving, you're doing snacks and games and learning all these things. And then COVID-19 happens and we are no longer able to meet in person. And so Mike Sanders, our youth director, moves everything online. So talk to us about your, your transition to serving online. Did you jump in right away or did it take you some time to, to get connected that way? No, I did it right away, although I didn't do it well. So I had to learn new technologies. So he had, Mike put me on Twitch first, and then I, I got moved to Discord. And one of the kids actually helped me um, get on uh, Discord. Um, and then we moved to Zoom, which was yet another thing I had to learn. And uh, Mike plays games with these kids, and mostly the games that we play are, are in-person, running around kind of games. Well, we can't do that. 
Um, and so he has moved to online games, which again was another learning uh, experience. Uh, for example, something called Jackbox, where, you know, the games are on Jackbox. And my brain doesn't fire as fast as their brains because I wasn't raised in, in that generation. You know, my technology was a transistor radio and a record player. And so I find that very often, you know, we're playing a game and I'm still answering and then I get locked out because I was too slow uh, at, at answering the, uh, the question. Um, so it's all been, you know, a bit of a, a, a bit of a challenge and a learning experience, but it's, it's been fun learning new things. I mean, could you ever imagine that you would be using the words Twitch, Discord, Zoom, you know? Instagram. I opened an Instagram account. And there is some rumor that the kids are interested in getting you to start a TikTok account because oh, they, is that right? yes, because they oh. truly believe that they can make you go viral. So be watching for that really? church uh, for right. Gloria Nardi Bell. And uh, maybe you'll get to see, maybe some of your old clients will see you online and oh, that'll uh, be fun. <laughs> yeah. And then we can, we can make you go viral. Listen, to finish up, I, and I know you've touched on this a little bit already, but what do you like? about serving in student ministries like what i know that we serve the glory of god and we serve to serve others but but the neat thing about serving in community and serving god in this way is that often we we do actually get something back from it we grow um i have grown both as a person and as a christian um and i now have direct access to teenagers and and so I'm learning how they think and what's important to them. When I was in practice early, early on, there was a judge who uh, retired and he wrote an article that we're going back like, like decades. And he wrote an article and he was a family court judge and he was concerned that we do not listen to teenagers. And of course, not having any children, being an Italian, um, my view was children should be seen and not heard. Um, and uh, so I couldn't figure out why he would want to listen to a bunch of teenagers. Well, you know what? I have learned why. Because they have something to say and uh, they have a contribution to make. And it's really, really important to listen to these teenagers. And we have to remember that these teenagers, they are the future. Mm. And so I think that uh, listening and learning and sharing experiences intergenerationally, uh, that's all part of what makes a church grow. That's amazing. And so we're never too old to serve. We're never too um, disqualified to serve. I mean, scripture tells us time and time again that that when we feel disqualified, when we feel that it's something that we can't do, we are to remind ourselves that, that God is the one who empowers us. And where God has called you to serve, he will give you the, the skills to do so. And so um, church, step out in faith. We have something at Calvary called a ministry try where we say that um, we think that it takes everybody three times serving to figure out whether they are really going to like it or not. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because the first time is either going to go fantastic because it's a honeymoon period, or it's going to go terrible because you feel insecure and you don't know quite know what you're doing. And so the first night is really getting your, your feet wet and, and getting acclimated to the people. The second night is when you start to really notice the nuances of the area that you're serving, whether it's kids ministry, student ministry, hospitality, uh, worship team, you start to really um, see what's going on. And the third time is where you start to see how God might use your skills and your abilities, your passions and your talents to build up the body of Christ. And so even though we're not meeting in person at this time, be praying about where God might want you to serve in the future and consider a ministry try three times to see where God would have you serve. Ask him where that might be and step out in faith. And, uh, and you might just be surprised, right, Gloria? Absolutely. But for Pastor Aaron's uh, email or 
Facebook post, mm -hmm. it wouldn't even have occurred to me to serve with teenagers. Would not have occurred to me. Uh, Candy, thank you so much for this opportunity to uh, share my experiences. I, I just, I love these kids and I have, um, I, I have grown so much uh, working with them and I certainly hope that, you know, I have given something back to them. You absolutely have and we look forward to seeing you go viral with your new TikTok account. All righty, well, <laughs> that'll be my next challenge. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for taking the time today, Gloria. Thank you, Candy. Have a lovely day. Thank you.